Greetings and salutations, friends, to Nebulous Fleet Command, a very interesting little space tactical strategy game that seems to almost be a bit like Command Modern Operations in space, essentially. Very intriguing mix, to be sure, where you command little fleets of vessels in a fairly detailed environment and try to fight an enemy in the same environment. There is a full, um, lovely little ship builder in the game. Let's see, and I'll just change our heading here first. Right yep. You can customize your fleets with uh, modules, weapons, systems, radar, electronic warfare, types of ships, etc, etc, all kinds of things, and then save it as a actual custom fleet before going on into multiplayer or skirmish gameplay. We will be doing a simple match against the AI here for my own sanity's sake, as the gameplay gets, um... Hectic, to put it mildly. I'm also not going to be using the optional pausing mode here to show you what I mean with hectic. In multiplayer, there is no tactical pause or slowdown, but when you're playing a single player, there is an accessibility option to turn on either a full pause or a partial pause, as in a time slowdown feature, which I highly recommend because there's a lot of buttons that you need to be pressing in this game, and uh, the AI can press all of those buttons simultaneously. You cannot. Particularly in larger engagements, that gets painful awfully quickly. Now, as you can see here, I've got my own little custom fleet. This is a 2099 point range fleet up against the AI starter fleet, which is honestly one of the most powerful AI fleets out there, because it's got four vessels which it can micromanage perfectly at all times with a great mix of weaponry. I have one frigate, which is the snug bug back here. Its only job, basically, is to die. <laughs> Literally. Well, it's, it's more like an ambush daggery death kind of thing. As the two main brawlers, the Rhine and the Flock, up here are light cruisers. They're equipped with a whole battery of single barreled automatic cannons of a fairly hefty caliber. I think they're like 200 millimeters or something. Nasty little things. They also come with a uh, pretty decent supply of PDDs with one 20 millimeter autocannon PDD and a 50 millimeter flak on the underside here. They also come with the standard four radar panels there. They're there and there, which each cover one area, and they've got two targeting radars, or non-targeting radars actually, with burn through, though that is something I'm probably intending on changing because it seems to do diddly dick nothing against practically every fleet I've run into in single player and multiplayer, the only exception being the occasional sniping fleet. There are a surprising number of uh, potential tactics you can employ to customize your fleet and customize what exactly it's supposed to be doing at any given time. Uh, one of my favorites, honestly, is actually a straight up sniper plus scout style formation where you have a very big, usually, ship with lots of big, big boy guns, rail guns, sitting at a very long range. Oh, oh that means I've been spotted. Not difficult to see because, um, well, my little ships up here are basically just enormous, well, decoys, basically. They're there to be giant, big, fat, and easily spotable. As you see, the snug bug has not been detected yet. Oh, okay. Let's activate our burn throughs, uh, both of the burn throughs, to see if we can spot something. We can't. Oh, no, there we go. We've got a target track over there. Right, I am going to activate the commitment there. Right, we've got a target track. Oh, God, that is a terrible angle for them to come in at. All right, I do have my 50 mil flak blasting loose at them. It's doing a decent job. I'd like to have more stuff online, however. Um... Okay, this is going to be an interesting one. I'm going to move to position, and I'm going to uh, form with ship, and I'm going to do beneath it at... Oh, Jesus. 200 meters. There we go. A very rapid and hazardous reorganization. Uh, right, we've got the enemy over there. Very well. I am now going to 
Mm, I do not have a good luck luck anymore. Ah, I spent too much time. My burn three is running out. Okay, well, I know kind of where they are, so I'm going to put down the radar jammer in the very rough area of where I think they might be. I'm going to pop on the radar here too to see if I can't get a better track. Yeah, okay. Well, we're going to try a bit of a long-range shot then. With our radars. Okay, so we think we've seen something up down there. Right, okay. We're going to fire these on roughly the same track. There we are. That'll send off, uh, I think, five uh, radar-guided homers, so they'll go active once they reach the waypoint and begin trying to find a target. I should be going clear of my cruisers as well, I hope. Yes, lovely. Uh, wait, what? Why are you heading over there? What? Uh, okay. Right, so this is a perfect time, I suppose, to discuss one of the things that annoy me the most about this game, and that is the hilariously massive and frankly utterly goddamn useless battle sphere. Look at this shit. Look at this. Can you tell what's going on? Because I can't. You've got... Okay, so these various little dotted lines are indicating the range of various things like PDDs or range weaponry or missiles, etc. On top of that, you've also got range markers. On top of that, you've also got the boundary of the map. Yes, all of this space is not for you to be played with. This is the withdrawal line. The maps are very, very tiny. On top of that, you'd also have objectives. You'd also have enemies. You might have enemy jamming. You might have enemy missiles. You might have your own missiles. This is the definition of far too much pointless information being just used to obfuscate the battle space rather than making it easier to see. There should be options to turn the various parts of this off, particularly as when you're beginning to try and use this to target weaponry, it's almost impossible to know where the hell you're firing something. All right, we've got the enemy straight down there. Which means we're going to be heading straight down there. We're We've got enemy missiles coming in again at a it's not perfect range, but oh, they're targeting the Rhine. Actually, that's ideal because that means they'll pass through the entire targeting art of both, and then they'll also take 20 millimeter PDD fire when they're passing overhead. Uh. Did we eat one of those? Yes, we ate one of those. So damage control crews are already going to be on the way to try and deal with that. Right, we're going to start uh, firing some ranging shots down there with AP to see what we can uh, what we can get out of that. Whilst the snug bug is going to stay nice and far back. We're getting jammed again. Very well. I'm going to put down a bit of... Jamming of my cell own to make this a little bit more difficult for the enemy. Uh, do we have more missiles or do we have a target tracker yet? I don't think the... Oh, not reload. Is the burn through? Yes, the, the burn through is off cooldown. So let's use that to see if we can find something. We do have an idea of where they are, but... This, this fleet very much so is kind of a ble dumb, deaf and blind one. We're going to kick those into flanking speed. The snug bug. Uh, yeah, you can, you can stay where you are. You've captured the objectives. This is actually fine for now. The jamming is a temporary effect, which will cause all of these false returns. But the burn through has figured out that there is most likely a target right there that I need to deal with. Right, considering... What's happening right here, too? I'm going to try and form off of my ship, and I'm going to try and form off to the side again. In fact, I would like to roll before I do that, actually. I would like to roll like this. And then... I want to form up with ship to the side of the ship. So I'm presenting the maximum number of PDDs towards the enemy. Right, there we are. Yes, that is outside of our range. 
I basically have no fire control uh, radars on these ships, which I'm very much so considering putting in instead of the burn-through radar, since I feel like it doesn't do a whole lot most of the time. But whatever is down there is currently getting showered in AP rounds, and is probably going to have a very, very, very bad day. Oh, was that a, a track and beep? Yes, I the snug bug, uh, the snug bug's elint has discovered that there are probably enemies up there. Okay. In that case, we are going to fire off some uh, some more homing missiles. Oh god, this this perspective really sucks a frightening amount of PP. Right, so we're going to fire it off round about round about like there. And we're also going to fire off the the uh, jamming in the same area. Oh. Missiles? Yes, missiles. But you can see now that I managed to roll my hull, there is there is diddly dick chance any missile is going to be getting through this shit. That, that ain't happening. Right, we have a visual confirmation of the target. It is indeed one of the frigates, which is getting currently showered to shit with AP rounds. It is not having a very good day. Now, the AP rounds are not perfect against these kinds of target. In fact, I am going to have you uh, cease fire, and I'm going to have the flock enter into, nope, not like that, an orbit around this target. We're going to orbit at uh, a decent distance to make sure we're outside of, oh, okay. The perspective really is a pain in the ass to make sure we're outside of reactor bloom fire, as this, this thing is bone, so... 1.7, 6, right about. And then we are going to switch to HE, and we're gonna resume firing. Mean, uh, meanwhile, the Rind is going to change its course. And the Snugbug. Uh, right, I don't know the missiles. I don't even know if they went in the direction I wanted them to, because I was kind of distracted there. But the flock will be able to deal with this thing happily. Like, it's already been beaten to shit. Its guidance and weapon system are already probably offline. You are not going to be able to tell that, of course, until you can, you know, expose it to your sensor systems for a long enough period of time. Now, I'm also going to go in here and tell it to clear heading and roll. Uh, this will make sure that it will automatically unmask as many of its guns as possible to keep firing on target, as, of course, the guns can't fire through your own hull, obviously. Right, the Rind is being detected, unsurprising. Uh, where does the snug bug think that the enemy is? Where's my Elint telling me that they are? Mm, don't have any good Elint return right now, actually. Right, well, oh, fair enough. Uh, I am being targeted, very well. They're probably up there somewhere. So we're going to issue another move to position order. And we're just going to start heading in the general direction of that area. And once we've completed a bit of a turn, I am going to tell the snug bug to resume position behind the rind. Let's see. Heading, orbit, position. Form with ship. There we are. Right, and we're going to have that for my position uh, 1.5 kilometers odd behind the Rhind. And we're going to turn off flank speed, which we should have done here already, because flank speed will damage your uh, your drives. But I've currently got two uh, damage control lockers, so I really should be able to deal with any damage I'm taking. All right, we've got a new Elint report. There is presumably a warship up there. Uh, bearing in mind, I only have one Elint system that's currently on the snug bug, so I am getting at best a very, a very rough track of the target. But I'm carrying quite a few radar guided missiles to do some fishing for this precise reason, so it's not too bad. Maybe we can boost up the round a little bit. Uh, nah, no good solid returns whatsoever. Right, the flock has probably beaten this thing into submission. Uh, I don't see any... No escape pods yet, so the crew is probably still trying to save it. 
Send traffic. But it has taken one hell of a beating. Still got 850 odd shells, so I'm not exactly in any hurry to disengage. Might as well continue beating it up a little while longer. Is any of my systems need repairing? Nope, the automatic uh, damage control is doing its job perfectly well. Now, all of these, this actually gives me a moment here, all of these systems are, of course, their own systems. As you can see, the cannon right now is currently being repaired. So there's a uh, damage control team up there right now, which is in position to try and deal with it. They're currently idling because there's not a whole lot more they can do. Every 10% of a system that you lose is a 10% that you cannot recover. Now, I'm going to tell them to... Uh, do I have anything destroyed? I don't. Okay, so I might as well just... Let them do their thing right now, whilst they're dealing with the repairs. Yes, As I am going to continue looking for the enemy, which is currently hiding for me. Most... Most unsportsmanslike. You dead yet? You should really be dead by now. I mean, look at you. Yeah, if it ain't dead, it's going to be awfully soon. So I'm going to order a ceasefire here. And I'm going to order a move to position inside of that cap circle to make sure I'm getting me some points. Help, take us in. There we are, lovely. What are our orders, Commander? Oh, are you... Uh, ah, yes, you're still doing the dumbass thing. Right, uh, clear heading and roll. Uh, because it was on a heading and roll, that's why it's driving sideways right now. Which is about the most ineffective usage of engine power you could possibly imagine. A really cool thing, thing too, by the way, as you can see here now, is actually using its various thrusters to move the ship around. And the main engines aren't firing, because right now the main engines would of course push the ship forward, which is not the point. The point is to turn the ship, and so the thrusters around the nose are the ones currently blasting off. But once the ship begins to change its course, it'll begin turning on different, uh, different burners. Oh, there goes the main engines on. That is such a really cool little touch right there. I love that. I really do. That is awesome. Alright, I have apparently made a... Oh, hello. Uh, are we getting jammed again? What? Uh, were we hit by something right now? There's a fire going. We were hit by something, although I have no idea what or where. We've got the radar on. Yep, yep. Communications is on. Set traffic. Aha! On the enemy fire. Right, okay. For reasons unbeknown to me, none of the PDDs are currently reacting, which is lovely. I might be so badly jammed that the PDDs are completely inactive. Yep. Okay, well, that does suck a fair bit. Yep, it knocked out my antenna, too. Oof. Well, that's awful. That means I can't actually do much with it right now because it's not receiving orders. Very negative. Very negative indeed. On the right side. That should give me a target up above, which I'll launch a radar jammer against as well. Hopefully the missiles will actually track on target this time, that'd be lovely. And the Rind will begin to do its thing. Right, okay. Uh, oh, it knocked out the small damage control locker, that's particularly annoying. And the CIC, that was a very, 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 very lucky salvo right there, annoyingly so. Alright, well... It's going to try and do its thing as best as it can. Set there is a gun frigate coming in towards me there. Not great. Let's make sure that we're engaging that with HE. Hey, best is just rushing at me. Okay. Unload. 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 Also, the flock is probably going to need to get the hell back here as well. Make sure we don't pass too close to that, uh, that damned broken one. This is uh, what we would usually like to refer to as good old-fashioned panic firing. But it's looking like the panic firing might work out pretty well. Yep, boom, 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 boom.
Yeah, that ship is going to be feeling pretty bad right about now. Alright, my antenna is back up again. Lucky, lucky. Means I can actually get a little bit of instructions back in. Let's see, we've lost one of the damage control lockers and we lost one of the frontline radars. And we want cannon and a gun plotting room down and both DC lockers are down. Okay, that's why I can't actually recover anything. God damn, that was a lucky bloody salvo. You can see I've actually put the, uh, the damage control lockers in very different areas of the ship, specifically to try and avoid this scenario, because normally, uh, so long as you've got the damage control lockers online, you can actually fully recover, well, not fully recover, but you can actually recover some uh, systems. Oh, life bolts being deployed, right. That thing is fully balked then. Uh, but since they got so lucky as to knock out both of the damage control lockers in basically one salvo, I can't, uh, I can't recover anything, which is very unfortunate. Right. Well, the Ryan can still fulfill its primary duty, which is being a big dumb decoy. We'll have that cease fire, and we'll have the snug bug continue to follow on behind. The snug bug has not performed his duty of dying today, in fact has done remarkably well, as we have taken out two of the enemy's ship, meaning that there are still, still two wandering around, and the rind has gotten pretty badly beat up, whereas the flock is actually pretty much entirely operational, which is quite nice. Receiving. Right, we're going to tell the rind to engage in a little bit of evasive action here, because apparently it's... Its radar systems are beaten to absolute shit. Um, this is one of the weaknesses of these PDDs, which I'm kind of, I'm kind of wondering to switch them back out again. Uh, these are the 20mm PDDs. As you can see, there's a little radar icon on top of them. Uh, they have to get access to the system's own... Oh, beepy noises. Okay, we've got beepy noises up ahead, and we are currently being shot at. Unfortunate. Right, begin returning fire. Let's have the... Uh, 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 move, 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 move to position. They're all the way up there, huh? Right, okay, let's have the flock head up there. Let's kick in flank. Uh, this is not a good angle for the snug bug, but at the very least, we're going to engage the radar jammer. The... Ryan still has a decent complement of guns. It's still got four operational weapons, so it's not exactly like it's helpless. Send traffic. Send traffic. Right. Probably no point in saving up weaponry right now, so let's fire off the last uh, six of our radar guided. See if we can't get lucky. Now, the snug bug is de facto unarmed at this point, as uh, beyond electronic warfare, it has no other weaponry. So we are going to send it uh, on a bit of a roundabout journey here to maybe just get into that position, and we're going to kick it into flank to make sure it's got some speed going there. All right. Oh, yep. That that pretty much killed that one, which leaves them with just one ship. Send traffic. Which means that I am Le Victor in all due likelihood. Yeah, we see them. Light cruisers, ladies and gentlemen. They are... Honestly, probably the single best ships currently available, as they are exceptionally fine brawlers. Exceptionally fine brawlers. Do not underestimate this fleet here, though. Uh, it is actually one of the most dangerous AI fleets, in my opinion, because it's got a lot of missiles, it's got a lot of guns as well. It is a very, very dangerous little fleet. Let's also have a quick look at the fleet editor here to wrap things up. So here you can see you've got the various hulls. So you can select a blank one. The smaller is the Corvette, then you've got the frigate, the destroyer, the light cruiser, the heavy cruiser, and the battleship class. And there are many things you can do with these things. For example, 
the heavy cruiser, the big boy, has access to some rather little neat things. Uh, let's go for the big ones right here. So you can see the selection of e war for example, of sensors and missile launchers, PDDs and railguns. Oh yes, the railguns are sniper weapons. Um, a very popular little mix right now, for example, is to have either a frigate, the frigate is a little bit larger, but a frigate equipped with the spyglass radar. Let's see, was that here or was it here? There we are, the spyglass radar which has a max range of 11.5 kilometers. So the idea is that you put a ship with a bunch of radar and preferably jamming equipment as well, and you then target the enemies, keeping nice distance to make sure that you are spotting them with the scout ship and you are beating the shit out of them with the sniper ship. Now this is also something you can actually counter, because to do this the spotting ship needs to be able to communicate with the sniping ship. So this ship has to be able to send data to the sniper, which means that if you are carrying along, for example, jamming equipment like the, um, the, 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 the hang-up jammer, for example, that will actually interfere with comms. Now the jammer will just signal that will interfere with radar, so that won't help much in that regard, but it might be able to, you know, screw with target locks, etc. But the jammer will actually interfere with the spotter's ability to communicate with the sniper, which means that the sniper will actually lose sight of your ships entirely. It is a very cool little rock, paper, scissors thing where you need to bring a lot of E-War to counter certain things, or you could alternatively just ignore E-War entirely and just go with a series of very heavily defended bruisers, like for example the light cruisers are perfect for this. You can laden them down with tons of point defenses and maybe even something like for example the smaller launcher, this one here, which I need to slap on a magazine, a bulk magazine, there you go. Uh, and there you go. Now you can carry the Riposte missile, which is a, a, a anti-missile missile, an intercept missile. You can also use chaff decoys to mess with enemy radar lock missiles. You can potentially create a light cruiser with ridiculous quantities of point defense, able to shoot down absurd volleys of missiles, and also screw with enemy radar lock missiles. Radar lock missiles are the most effective because you're only, um, well you do have actually quite a few options and I do believe they were planning potentially even more. If we look at these here, you've got the Thunderhead which is an active radar missile, in other words when it reaches its waypoint there is a radar inside the missile that tries to find the target. You've also got stuff like the Squall which is an anti-jamming missile trying to home in on jamming signals like uh, radar jamming. You've got the Hurricane and this is a command missile. You may also notice that it's um, pretty, pretty decently prized some of these things, like the semi-active Gale, for example. So the Thunderhead, six points, fire and forget missile. The Hurricane Command Missile, that one actually requires a direct link to your ship, so your ship is actually guiding this in, which means that if you lose your radar lock or your jam, you're not going to be able to hit anything, which is a big deal, but if you can maintain a radar lock, then you can actually turn the missile around if it misses. And then you've got the Gale. Only three points. Why? Because it requires an Illuminator to be able to hit the target. So it isn't just even a radar lock, it requires a specific thing, like the spotlight or the floodlight, to be on target to guide it in. But it's super cheap, so you can bring a lot of them, as your primary constraint is points. So the total command size of the fleet is measured in points. For example, Let's open up the fleet we just used, my little test three, a very, a very um, inventive name, I know. Working, there we go. That's a 2083 point fleet. The uh, frigate fleet it went up against was a 2099 point fleet, I believe. In this case, as you probably saw, the Rhine and the Flock have basically no E-War. Uh, the only thing I put on them was two of these frontline radars, and I picked those because of their ability to use the burn through, so I was hoping I could get cut through enemy radar jamming with those. Turns out, 
No. No, you can't. Not even slightly. So they're probably going to get switched out for something else. Whereas the Snugbug is my sole source of E-War in this case, which is Up Jammer, which is primarily they're merely there to screw with enemy missiles and make the PDDs of these two ships even more effective. And one source of Elint, which is this thing right here. The Elint attempts to... Um, well, elitists. There, normally, there would be um, a way to passively observe radar waves, but the game is a bit funny with how it does radar. So the elint, electronic intelligence, in this case, is literally just a passive radar receiver. So when the shit, shit, when the ship is being hit by radar, this thing will go, oh, radar waves, and it'll begin like, oh, where are they coming from? They're not coming from over there. They're not coming from over there. They are coming from over there. Okay, so there must be a ship somewhere in that general direction. Really useful when you're doing a brawling fleet like this, whose primary tactic is to run screaming towards the target at Mach 5, and then blast it down with tons of cannons. It's a really damn cool little game, and I think it'll be very, very, very interesting for a lot of people, though it does have a little bit of what I would like to call an explanation problem. The tutorial does a decent job of introducing you to the basic concept, but it doesn't do enough to explain how to apply those concepts. It's like, okay, point jammer at target, enemy can't see you. All right. But how much how much jamming do you need? Like, is there is there is there a point where too much jamming? Is there a point where there's too little jamming? Uh, what do I do if there's not enough jamming? What do I do if I am being jammed actively and I can't burn through it? All of these more tactical questions are really something that should be taught. Well, here's the thing: there's going to be a campaign, so maybe the more advanced lessons will be in the campaign. In which case, fair enough. But yes. That is Nebulous Fleet Command, currently available in Early Access. A very, very intriguing little title. I do have some issues with, uh, again, the battle. The battle sphere is just... It is too much clutter. There should be a, an ability to customize exactly what is in the battle sphere. Um, for example, there's already some accessibility options here, like being able to turn on active pause, for example, and uh, camera bob, and uh, the widget perspective, etc. But, and this does skip camera, so you can actually flip the camera, what, up and down, in case you're trying to be below or above the enemy, which is really cool as well, but it would be great if there was a representation here of the battle sphere, and I could be like, turn off that, 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 because... My god, it is a pain in the ass to see anything. And I mean, you need to also be able to click on things and target them and move through like three or four mouse clicks to do anything. It gets awfully painful awfully quickly. Anywho, I have right hopes for this game and uh, I think it's going to turn out really, really cool. And maybe maybe a year's time or so when it eventually leaves early access and I'm greatly looking forward to it. Till then, I've been Arch, thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.